Welcome back everybody. How are we doing? Welcome to part two of the Bee and Daisy's wine glass. I'm carrying on here just smoothing out the edges adding a little half tone as you can see around the petals and any little chips will be obliterated. Hopefully there aren't any. Oh, that's nice of you to show everybody, Leslie. <laughs> that's the little white Arkansas. You can see I'm taking it along the stem that instantly reduces the stem to a, a half tone as it's doing with all the diamond. It's such an easy move. It's such a fantastic little burr. You can get away with using this without any rubber quite frankly but um, just showing it up against the uh, the leaf there right adding some lines to the leaves what I'm doing actually is just running over the the ridges that are already there made by the diamond and that's instantly made them darker and I'm looking for little areas that may need a little bit smoothing uh, because maybe the diamond was a little bit rough on the edge instantly separating the petals with a simple line as you can see I've turned the glass as well for far easier control as I've said before it's easy to pull towards you and push away from you rather than doing the sideways movement you do want a nice smooth line smooth movement if you like Make up the shadows as you go along. There's a complete, a completely endless variety of shading, aging. It could be anything on that leaf. Absolutely anything. So there's no strict rules as to where your shading is. Here we have the um, nice soft grey rubber which I'm using just in my hands well, in one hand <laughs> obviously not two and I'm just holding it on its side and you can see already what it does to the diamond another amazing little burr you can see it's quite worn down you can see it's already got a hole in the top because it's worn right down um, but just by rubbing it over the diamond, it will soften, soften the effect of the diamond and create a gentle, gentle shade. And if you then put it in the drill, it'll make a darker shade. But isn't that amazing? Very useful for um, faces and that sort of thing, where you really, really want something subtle. Got it in the drill now, so you can see that instantly running faster. I'm not necessarily pressing hard, but running faster, it's picking up ridges. And there's some nice little effects on that leaf, just simply by the fact that the diamond has gone deeper in places. I've, you know, played around with it a little bit and it's just picked up different ridges, giving it different effects different dimensions just an instant sweeping movement you can see I'm going sideways with it there which is slightly uncomfortable it doesn't matter with with the a rubber running like this whether you're going sideways 
so you're not you're not making a neat line you can see the glass is actually sitting quite loosely and I'm just moving it around with my hands it doesn't need to be sitting rigidly in in the clasp now I'm going over where the white Arkansas effects were in the middle um, in places which making which is making them quite a lot darker and on the little bud that's cute that's just suddenly come to life that whatever I touch that's already shaded is now going to be much much darker and because it's a soft grey rubber it tends to go into the engraving a little bit more than if we were using a rigid black disc rubber because that tends to pick the top surfaces and um, whereas this just goes into the engraving a bit more you can see how it's it's picking up the uh, edges it's showing up the edges a little bit uh, where I've done the ridge in the middle of the petals that's rather fun isn't it I like that just quick movements because I don't want to make these lovely white petals too dark but I just want to add that dimension This is great. I love this sort of design. It's so easy. Right, you can see I'm showing you where I've worn that right down. And um, you can, you can, I've already turned it upside down. You can see where it was worn down from the other side. And basically you can unscrew it and turn it over. But I think I might just give up on this one. There's not much left of it. Oh, look, I'm going to try. <laughs> That's a little bit desperate. No. Am I? can't see now I've actually put it in there righty ho we're still going to use this screw up the little bolt there and we get a little bit more wear out of that which is amazing that little bit at the top will be quite soft because it's thin so you've got to watch it when you use it oh I'm going to use this by hand <laughs> And here we have a nice dark rubber. I think that dark rubber is actually from Eternal Tools and is part of the Leslie Pie Glass Engraving Starter Kit. Just making some of these ridges a tiny bit darker. Because it's hard, it doesn't... Uh, well, it's harder. It doesn't sort of drop into the deeper engraving as much as the softer grey rubber does. All right, we've got a little diamond uh, burr, which I am using dry and it's quite a sharp one, which is nice. And you can see where I'm just putting little sharp effects in the middle there little highlights it's cutting into that nicely of course this is such beautiful crystal it's so soft it's like butter you can make these up as you go along really doesn't matter I think as I said before, in the real life uh, daisies, they've got a really neat middle bit with everything organized in spirals. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> when I'm doing sunflowers, as long as the area is big enough, of course, then I do try and, and do the spiral effect, which is rather fun. We've done that one already, Liz. We can move on now. 
few more bits of highlights here and there. What have we got here? Looks like this same sort of diamond. Um, quite small. And into the B we go, just adding a little bit more to that and just neatening the area of it a little bit, filling it in. our canvas and in a very easy move we are putting in some dark lines on the bee's body. You can just see that underneath the body is slightly flat and so we've added that extra dimension there. And into the legs, just making them a little bit deeper. perfect little tool for uh, little bees and insects legs when you pr press slightly hard it does dig into the glass it's quite amazing and very easily polished out to a nice shine because they've got nice shiny black legs which we'll do a little later Right, it looks like I'm looking for the eye here because I have got my reference in front of me. starting to look a little bit alive so now we don't want to go very deep on the wings uh, wings are of course incredibly delicate they're gonna hardly be there this is just for starters and also Remember, these little wings are flapping away at some phenomenal speed. So in the end, what we're really going to be doing is just creating an impression of movement. Here we have a large grey rubber. It's got quite a lot of uh, roughness in it and it's very good by itself. And I will demonstrate here what it can do. It does a very similar thing to what a black rubber does. In fact, you can see the hue 
that it creates. And I used the black rubber for the dragonfly in the previous video, which produced a very similar effect. This one's just a little bit large, <laughs> but if you get it on the edge, this is a very worn out rubber. It didn't start its life like this. It has been going a very long time. And we're not worried about uh, the actual sharp edges anyway, because this bee is buzzing along. There are no sharp edges to these wings. This is an impression. Right, so back to the white Arkansas. Let's just define it a bit more. As I said before, it's like a painting. You go back and forth and back and forth and play and build. We've got plenty of glass to play with. And I think I know what I did there. I did not like the angle of that wing at all. So I have just uplifted it slightly. Yeah, that's better. It was too flat. Now you can see the shininess when you turn it against the light. So I'm doing my little stipple effect just to show you. You get a practice piece of glass and run it really slowly. Hold, hold it near the, the back end of the drill and just bounce it around on the glass. And it just produces these lovely little sparkly effects. And if it's not, then you can see if it's not doing exactly what you want, you can just physically put the, the dots there yourself. Back to my little hand rubber tool and just go over that again to blend it. Just for that impression of a buzzing bee. Right, we've got the little brown rubber ever so skinny nice and sharp on the top which you can you run it against a stone or something like that to get that sharpness and that's gone straight into the eyeball to make it nice and shiny and into the legs the little black areas on the back. Shading the other side a little bit. This is also a white Arkansas, just a slightly different shape. I think I've, pr I'm probably holding my breath here. Yes, take a deep breath and you've got to get this right. You cannot give him an enormous <laughs> bill. It's just a tiny little half tone 
sort of mouth that they've got you will see that that's going to be nice and dark there Liz, your head is nearly in the way. <laughs> we just about got away with that one. And the brown rubber again. Nice and sharp. You don't want to get that on the open glass because that will also make a very, very slight hue. So stick to your areas rigidly. Look at the look at the eyes shining as well. I like that. Isn't that gorgeous? So realistic. Quickly putting some background shading into its body. We have already done a bit of that, but Back to the little white Arkansas. I think I'm going to do the feet. Yes, I'm going to do some feet. Again, these are just tiny impressions. So there's something there. I actually left off the back one and I do add it later on so don't worry it's not missing a back foot obviously not all the legs are visible right I think I'm holding my breath again <laughs> for these little bits on the top of his head they've got to be ever so neat And this is a nice uh, little tool to have. It is just that white stone. I forget in just offhand what it is. Now I'm actually sharpening, sharpening it, but it's out of focus. My apologies. But I'm sharpening the top of the rubber so I can really get into those little antenna. I'm calling them that. I don't know if what <laughs> what they are really called feelers I don't know I've done that many bees before I should know by now I should look it up right little rat's tail diamond burr nice and sharp and we're going to add some tiny little hairy effects working dry of course still because they really really come out nice and bright as long as your diamond is your burr is sharp if it is not then put a stone into the drill and hold the tip against the stone and all you do is wear it down to where the new fresh diamond edges are The sun often, or the sun, the light often picks up the edges, the little hairs on the back. So where I don't normally outline with a bright uh, finish on the, on the outside of items, little animals, these little bees generally have a bright little outline. So with the hairy bits you've got 
uh, little tiny tiny little strokes and where the where the little hairs are coming directly at you um, obviously you'll see me do some little dotty effects uh, not that anyone's really paying that much attention to it it's just the impression really tiny 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 little hairs you really don't want to make a um, a great big hairy bear they are quite hairy but you've got to keep them delicate and they have quite a hairdo as well can do lots of hairy bits down the middle of a animal or insect but to have the little hair sticking out the edges really really give it the hairy effect which is fantastic so don't forget to do the edges tiny little highlights on the edge, ever so tiny. I've got tiny little hairs on the legs which usually just show up with the sun on the edges. Right, what have I spotted? <laughs> it's a while since I've done the video so this is all exciting uh, White Arkansas again I'm just making this a little bit darker underneath the bud because these are, are leaves really well I don't know if you call them leaves no I don't know what you call them they, the housing for the bud. Just simple strokes, bringing it up, and we will define the edges of it just now. But it's just the right color, of course. Very, very gentle shade. And it will carve well into the glass as well which is very handy there's a little brown rubber again just to make them a little bit darker And the rat's tail again. So here we are literally going in between the little green leafy bits because that will define the edges of them. you can see I've dragged out into the open 
a sharp little point. Right. I was going to say, that wasn't a white Arkansas, is it? It looks very much like the aluminium oxide one. There's definitely a white Arkansas now. I'm just showing you what a single line with this looks like. Okay. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the stem. <laughs> oh, dear, that was funny. Okay. There we go. An instant stem. That looks better. That one we did earlier. Now, you'll see I make sure that I don't have, come on Liz, make sure you don't have the little gap. That's it. You don't have the little gap. It must go underneath the flower. Don't stop your stems in the middle of nowhere. I see that really quite a lot. Take it into the flower. Always check. Just look over and check everything. No little chippy bits. I've got myself a, a rat's tail and the next thing is to do your signature and the date. Very important. Twenty twenty that year <laughs> we're gonna look back at this year and go, Oh my goodness. <laughs> this was my first lockdown glass with coronavirus across the globe. A little bit more highlight on that leg. I think we're just about done. Just needs a jolly good clean. It 
It's a lovely effect having a bee flying around the glass. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Do have a go and happy engraving. Till next time. Goodbye.